Now then YouTube, I'm the Tough Man and welcome back to a complete guide to Thorncraft 5. Well guys, we are in the last tab now, it's the Eldritch tab. Possibly going to get all of these done in one episode, though I cannot pr you know, promise that one. It may be two episodes, who knows. But anyways, let's start straight away by saying that in the description below there are going to be timestamps to each and every single part of this video. So um, if you're looking for something in particular, go ahead and press that. If you're enjoying this series, if you find it um, educational, if you find that you've learned something from this, then please go ahead and leave a like on the video. It would be brilliant if you could, guys. And we're going to start with Eldritch Epiphany. This is the first thing that you'll find that is unlocked um, when you open Open the Eldritch tab. It suddenly become clear to you, where others see chaos, you occasionally catch a glimpse of a pattern. A very strange and disturbing pattern. Something stirs in the darkest corners of the universe. You have tried to explain it to others, but received only strange looks in return. No matter, you will show them someday. You will show them all. So two alienists, three Tenebrae. Is that three or eight Tenebrae? I can't see. I think it's eight. Eight Tenebrae and eight Vacuous with some seeds, and you get a Void Seed. And that's actually used to make Void Metal. Void Metal can be made with a Void Seed with seven Metallum and one Vitium. And with Void Metal, you can go ahead and make Void Metal Gears and an Iron Ingot. You can make Void Metal Plates. You can also make Void Axe, Sword, and you can see it's actually got lesser sapping. I'll go through that in a second. Uh, the, and Pickaxe, Shovel, and the Void Hoe. You can also make Void Helms, Void Chest Plates, Void Leggings, and Void Boots. So let's have a quick gander at this. By infusing magic into metal, you have managed to create th uh, Thormium. It was a weather discovery, but the time has come to leave the Thormium to amateurs and dabblers. A strange and half-remembered dream has given you the urge to try something different. What if you could infuse metal with more than just magic, but with the very essence where magic is drawn from? Darkness and the void that dwells between the stars. The resulting metal is disturbingly slick and warm to the touch. It is almost as soft as gold, making it easy to work. But when struck, it becomes as hard as thormium, and sometimes even harder. More impressively, all but most devastating damage soon repairs itself as the metal slowly flows back, back into place. The only downside is that the thormium isn't as easy to enchant um, the, the, it isn't as easy to enchant as thormium, but still compares favourably to mundane materials like iron. You've discovered that care must be taken when handling the metal. Being harmed by it seems to temporarily sap your strength. It's pretty interesting. So, <clears throat> you can see that the Void Axe has Warping Effect 1 on it. You can also see this has Warping Effect 1. Um, the Void Pickaxe has Warping Effect 1. The Shovel has Warping Effect 1. And the Void Hoe has Warping Effect 1. Now, I believe that's against the player. I could be totally wrong, but it does have like a... A warping kind of effect. I think that's... No, hang, hang on a minute. No, hang on a minute. I am totally going wrong there. The warping effect means that um, it just repairs itself, I believe. I'm pretty sure it is. So that is the Void Metal. Now, with the Void Metal, you can go two different ways. You can go up to Void Thaumaturge's Robes, but only if you found the Eldritch Revelation. And you can go Void Metal Wand Caps. So we'll go over there first. Void Metal Wand Caps. Um, which are basically just... Void metal caps, um, void metal nuggets um, with 90 of Peditio, Order, Ignis, and Air. And you can make the charged void metal caps, which have four Salis Mundus around an inner void, void metal cap with 18 um, Alienis, Aurum, Potentia, and Vacuous. A very high instability. Creating ones, um, blah, 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 creating wand caps from void metal seems counterintuitive. Seems it. it huh. I can't talk today, since it seems to be highly resistant to magic, but counterintuitive is where you live now. Your gamble paid off. The magic itself may be resistant to magic and channel Vs no better than gold or brass, but it can draw Vs from the aura much quicker than normal. The magic does seem strange somehow, but it's probably just your imagination. <laughs> and of course, if you've got your Eldritch Revelation, which, read into that as you will, Nobody knows what the hell that is. Um, you can get Void Thaumaturge's robes. So you can literally put Void Helms and stick some enchanted fabric to it with some Salis Mundus and Goggles Revealing, and you will get the Void Thaumaturge's hood. It gives you that warping effect, but it also gives you the Vs discount of 5%, as you would usually get from the um, Thaumaturge's robes. You could also get the robe. You can get the leggings, and that's how you craft them. So, 
By augmenting your existing Void armor with the proper enchantments and combining them with the Formaturge's robes, he will be able to create a set of armored orb uh, robes that not only offer physical protection and mental focus, but mystical protection as well. The robes will also retain all properties of Void armor, while the hood will offer all benefits of the goggles used in its crafting. This armor can be dyed. I think that warping effect actually is you it will actually steady your warp that you actually get. So um, it, it you won't you won't get as many warping effects, should I say, from all of the stuff that you do. So moving on then, guys, um, is from Eldritch Epiphany, this sanity check. It's, this is pretty decent, actually, and this is pretty useful. Things have become busy in your mind lately. It's probably best that you have a look inside there and make sure everything is still all right. This tool will help you check the effects of warp on your psyche and how much it is affecting you. Of course, you cannot allow a tool like this to fall into the hands of your enemies, so you have taken great pains to obfuscate the information it provides. You might have gone too far, though. You are having a hard time deciphering it yourself. So the sanity checker, if we go and grab one, I'll show you how to use it. Sanity checker. If you hold that in your hand, you can see on the top left there, I'm actually not... I've got no warping effects whatsoever. I've got nothing up on that top left hand side there. I think there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little amount of purple in the bar right at the bottom there that you can see. But it's literally nothing that's going to make any kind of difference to me at all. But once you, when you do things around the world like turn... Oh my god, look at the state of this place. I have totally wrecked this place. I'm so sorry. It's that sinister node. It's made a right mess of everything. Um, but if I was to go ahead and do forbidden magic and stuff like that, that little bar up on the top left hand side, or even create something that that requires uh, forbidden knowledge, um, if you do that, then that little bar over there will go ahead and start getting full. And depending on the colour of it, I think the really dark purple is uh, permanent warp, and the lighter purple is the temporary warp that I've discussed before in uh, previous episodes. So moving on, Wand Focus Primal. This thing needs four diamonds, Four nether quartz and one primal charm with 250 of each vis. What madness possessed you to create this thing? This focus seems wildly dangerous and only a lunatic will attempt to use it anywhere but the most controlled environments. Granted the orb of raw pile primal energy it creates is quite devastating but its path of travel is erratic at best and downright malicious at worst. It does beg further study however. The orb shows some interesting dimensional properties and it exhibits energy, pa energy patterns you have only seen in wisps and aura nodes. So let's go ahead and grab one. <coughs> there it is. And we'll put it on. And basically what it does is that. And it will go ahead and just blast everything. And when it hits the floor, of course, you can see it does create this little thing. But its path doesn't always go straight. Like that. It will change direction. And go wherever the hell it wants to go. Oh, it's not doing too bad, that. Go on, die. Nice. <laughs> I made a right mess of that one. But yes, that is the primal charm, guys. Moving on from there, you can also get a staff core of the primal. This thing requires all of the uh, elemental rods onto a silver rod and two primal charms with 28 air actually 28 of everything apart from 56 potentia. The car pulses with the latent en energy. It combines all of the features of Lester's stave cars. It has, uh, it has the V-storage capacity of the Silverwood car and is able to replenish its V-stores like various primal wand cars. Lastly, it adds one level of potency to any foci used with it. This is truly a potent toll in any Thaumaturge's arsenal. Note, you will still need to add caps to this stave rod just like you would for a normal wand. So that is the most powerful staff core that you can go ahead and get for your uses of, uh, you know, the wand foci and stuff like that. So keep that in mind there, guys. Well, going from here, guys, the Crimson Cult. Now, you actually need to get the book, the Crimson Cult book. And the way that you do that is in the world, there is um, little structures. Now, let me go and see if I can go into my other little world, go in there and guys and show you where I can find it. 
Okay, I have managed to find one. It's right here. However, it doesn't seem to be spawning any of the people that come with it. So you will find these structures around the world and on odd ones, you'll be able to see that people are actually spawning around here and you can go ahead and kill these, but they will be hostile towards you as well, guys. So please be aware of that. But you can kill these and they will gr drop the Crimson Rites book. This thing right here. And there we go. We've gained warp for that. But it has opened the Eldritch. Oh, we can't actually go in there yet, because... Ah, I wonder if that's a bug. You can't open it yet, because we haven't got enough... Oh, there we go. No, I found it. I found it, guys. It's good. It's all good. We found it. So, the Crimson Cult. That is how you get this little thing right here, guys. Um, so, yes. Just going from there. Um, let me go ahead back into my other world. Into here. And there we go. So that is how you get that Crimson Cult thing. So, going from there, um, much of this book is written in spidery and unintelligible script, but what you understand offers some strange insights into the goals of the Crimson Cult. Their origins are shrouded in mystery, but it seems their goal is, perf uh, is the perfection of a ritual they, prefer, uh, they refer to as Apertus Oculus, opening the eye. What it does is unclear, but you doubt it is anything good. Interestingly enough, you think Thaumaturgy might offer the missing pieces they have sought that they have so long sought. Obviously, only a madman would pursue this line of study. I am a madman. So it will actually give you this. Opening the eye. It was all so simple. You are amazed the Crimson Cults have never discovered this. To perform the ritual, simply need uh, you simply need to place four eldritch eyes on the specifically marked keystone found at one of the strange altars in your first dis uh, when you first discovered the cult. Once this is done, it's a simple matter of infusing a large amount of primal vase into the keystone with a wand. 1,000 units of each should be sufficient. So an Eye of Ender, a Void Seed, and Golden Nugget, uh, golden Ingots will give you this Eldritch Eye. If you have done everything right, the ritual should be complete and the so-called Eye would be opened. Of course, you have no idea what that means. No matter, only fools fear the unknown. From there, guys, you will then open the Sinister Lodestone. So, this Sinister Lodestone can be made with a Knight or an Entropy Shard, an Order Shard, a Knowledge Fragment, and a Flint. And uh, eight pieces of these beasts down the side here. You've made an in interesting discovery during your study of the op uh, Apatis Oculus ritual. The spot where the eye will open emits a very distinct kind of energy that is detectable even when it's still closed. By infusing a piece of Flint, you think you've could create a simple scrying device that will light up whenever it is pointed towards such an en energy signature. The range is limited, but it is worthwhile invention since the ritual stones are often hard to find. So that's what you can do, guys. Um, you can go ahead, get the Sinister Lodestone, hold it in your hand, and point it towards one of these. Now I'm going to actually go back over to uh, this place. There we go. Go back to one of these places, get a Sinister Lodestone. Hold it in your hand, and you can see it actually lights up when you point it towards one of them, which is right there in my case. There is no other ones around here, but that's a pretty useful tool, guys. That is a pretty useful tool, but it does require you to have found what, at least one to start with. Um, how does it? If you've got the Eldritch Eye, I'm not sure. Well, we need to go back into that world anyway because I'm, I'm an idiot and I haven't shown you this. So, to get to the Outer Lands, Eldritch Eye, please. Four. You go ahead and place the Eldritch Eyes all around the middle. Is that actually there? There we go. And then, of course, you need the wand. Ooh. Will it not work for me? That's only 500 in there. Ooh, give me a second, guys. Okay, so I've got one that will be able to do it. That is the Void Aspected Primal Staff, which has a thousand of everything in it. It's still not doing it. Is this one not working? What? Why? Why? <laughs> it should do. Oh, unless it's not... Um, whoops. Okay, let me go into the creative world and see what I can do from here. Um, it should open the Outer Lands. You are not quite sure what you were expecting when you stepped through the Oculus, but this strange structure of crumbling stone and twisted passages was not it. So let me go ahead and get... Is there still that uh, thing there? There is a cheat spot portal. There it is. Eldritch portal. <laughs> is that it? 
Wow. Is this actually... Can you get to the Outer Lands at the moment? I'm not quite sure if you can get to the Outer Lands at the moment. That is... Oops. That is really small. I mean, look at it. <laughs> it's not usually that small. Anyways, you can get to the Outer Lands. I'm not sure why it's not working. You can get to the Outer Lands, guys, which is this other uh, Thorncraft dimension. Um... But this strange structure of crumbling stone and twisted passages was not it. Something is not quite right here. This structure was not designed for any practical purpose you can discern. Only this, only that purpose was, only, uh, unless this, that purpose was used, uh, was for it to be a deadly maze. I can't read today. Strange energies abound, and your magic seems to act strangely in this alien environment. Even the other denizens you encounter seem out of place here. So once you've got that, guys, you can also find things that are in there. Uh, you know, we can use this as a kind of unspoilery thing. But anyway, revelations in the outer lands. Your suspicions have been confirmed. This is not the home of the race you have come to call the Eldritch. This place is something else entirely, and you do not believe it exists in what you understand as being reality. It is as much a mental construct as a physical one, but what mind can contain this? You have been able to decipher only a small number of the symbols, but you are sure this place is a trap, a place to test visitors and weed out the weak. For what purpose, you are not sure. And there we are, guys. That is the entirety of the Eldritch tab. If you've got any questions or anything like that, guys, or any amendments that you would personally like to make, then please let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget the timestamps are there, just in case you need to get to something in particular. Oh, that reminds me, actually. I haven't done these two. Primordial Pearl. You will but find bosses out in the outer lands that you can kill that will give you and drop a primordial uh, primordial pearl. And these are more, are more likely to be used in crafting recipes for some of the things that you've already seen in this uh, guide series so far. Some things do require primordial pearls. This object contains pure primal aspects but they possess properties unlike what you consider normal, everyday primal aspects. You have few theories why this could be. First, this pearl could be remnants of a primal matter that was created at the dawn of reality, elementary magic that existed before it mingled and merged into compound aspects. Alternatively, it could be primal matter from a place that does not conform to the known rules of magic as you've come to understand it. You are sure that which uh, you are sure which uh, you are not sure which explanation is more worrying. Either way, the pearl is uh, the pearl is a potent artifact containing vast magical power and nearly unlimited potential. It's time that you started putting it to use. And then, last but no means least, the primal crusher. This thing is awesome. It really is good, and it combines all of what you can see right here, along with the two primal charms, and requires a primordial pearl to be used in the uh, crafting recipe for this. Um, the Primal Crusher can mine through earth and stone with uh, equal ease and does so in a 3x3 area. Like the pickaxe of the core, it occasionally mines native clusters instead of raw ore. It repairs itself over time, has high enchantability, and serves as a relatively good weapon in a pinch. Unfortunately, it seems purely destructive in nature and has lost the construction and detection abilities of its parent tools. That is pretty awesome. That is really, really good. But anyways, guys, that is going to be it for the end of the Thorncraft 5 Complete Guide. Now, we'll be updating this as new versions do come out, and uh, we will see what comes of Thorncraft 5 in the future. So, if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and leave a like, and I will see you guys next time. Until then, I'll be the top man as always. Stay safe.